Welcome back to my Playing with the Dev series. Today, I continue chatting with Grimcore about Ships in the Sea update, effects of success on the development team, and he shares some super exciting news about the future of Valheim. So, the ocean is going to have a boss. Uh, if, if we can make it make sense, because the ocean is such a place where it's in between everything, so when would you actually go kill the ocean boss? Either it's going to be super difficult, or it's going to be super easy, I guess. Oh. Whoa, don't go there. Did you go there? I'm, oh, there you are. No, Sorry. I'm, I'm here. I connected before I had typed the name in, so somebody has a blank one somewhere. Um, I mean, wouldn't that depend, kind of? I mean, because the ocean boss would still be in a fixed location, right? Um, that's true, but you do have access to the oceans from meadows. True. You could build a raft in meadows and sail out into the ocean. That's true. But you wouldn't call the ocean boss until you found it and were ready, like you do with any other boss. Right? True. And that is true. That's a good point. And you could also gate it by distance as well, you know, like it could be so far out from the starter island. But that's that's still, yeah, that's still not a, a hard gate though, because you could still get a carve from Black Forest and sail your way out to the edge anyway. Right, so I guess maybe I'm missing something. What, what would be the problem with that? Because like currently you can have a carve and sail to the Ashlands or the Deep North or the Plains, even on a raft, mm. right? I think the big problem right now, what I'm trying to get it at, get at is maybe, uh, probably it's not a big problem at all, to be honest, but it's going to be to, to, to be able to determine at what point do would we want you to be able to do the boss okay but you still have to have whatever item it is to sacrifice to the boss right exactly but still like uh, in order for you to progress in the game like, let's say you're in meadows so the natural progression is you go to black forest uh, the next natural progression is not really that natural when it comes but you tend to want to go to swamps right but then you don't know if you if you're going up to mountains or if you're going to plains it doesn't really make that much sense i think hugan comes and says something about going up into the mountains or something um i don't remember the thing how is, i initially learned about that i think he says something about when you get the wishbone he says something mm. like it's yeah, good to it's, e it's right. easy to find silver or treasure for example up in the mountains or something yes. like that yes you're right but so the ocean biome either it has to be like a, a very hard gated place where you go to after mistlands or after yeah it's, it's gonna have to be after mistlands or it's gonna be like an in-between area between like swamps and mountains probably or something like that to move it back uh, in the progression. I mean, that's a possibility too, I suppose. Or probably maybe just put it in like a mini boss or something, an optional boss with his own stone somewhere, not even at the circle. Maybe outside on an island or something like that. I don't know. True. <laughs> I mean, I could see it going both ways. I, I could see both of those done at the same time. Um, I don't know. To me, it doesn't seem as big a deal to not be able to do the ocean boss earlier on or to be able to do the ocean boss earlier on because i mean really if you really want to you can do the bosses in any order that you want you know some people do like challenge games where they build the bo defeat the bosses backwards yeah i you saw know? one of those i've seen that I when I did the backwards boss run, which I, was very exploity, but it worked. <laughs> was it? I didn't. I didn't actually watch it, but I've I've heard about it, and 
I mean, there's so many yeah, different apparently. creative ways people are playing the game. Yeah, that's true. The thing is, I think it's going to be difficult to try to have people or force people to go through oceans and do an ocean boss be before another biome. It just feels, for me, it feels like oceans might have to be like an optional kind of thing. If you want, you can go do it. You don't have to. But if you want to, there's a reward waiting for you. That does make sense, too, because it seems like for some reason that some people have very strong feelings about what should be happening in the ocean. Have you noticed yep. this? Yes. I don't know. People want to go diving. I know people want to do have lots more creatures and stuff like that. But uh, absolutely. I, I, I think that oceans is a very empty biome so far there's not much to do there um so far right i know we had a lot of uh, the whole the whole thing with the road map when we had the ships and seas right we had some stuff planned for the oceans um we're still going to be doing that but i just don't know when yeah i like that you're not um I guess I kind of get the feeling that you guys have like put a little bit on the brakes and a pause and saying, you know, it's amazing and life changing that this has happened with our game blowing up. Um, but are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. I just got disconnected from the server. Oh, really? That's okay. why you disappeared because I just looked over to the other screen and you were gone. I was like, oh. She ran into another room. <laughs> That's strange. That doesn't happen very often. It seems as though I can sit down on chairs and stuff. I'm coming back in. All right. Uh, what were you saying? Um, I think that like with the we want this, we want this, we want this, we want this, and we want it yesterday, kind of thing. Mm. You know, I get the feeling that you're like trying to stay grounded and um you know keeping the style and the goal and kind of your desired purpose of the game to be true to what you want i, I to think be. i think the big thing is that when we uh when the roadmap rolled out uh it's not really what we wanted to do because we felt when the roadmap rolled out uh we had so many bugs that we had to fix and make sure because we always wanted to have a, a, a nice experience over content right. it should be a, it sh you should be able to play with your friends if you buy a game you should be able to buy uh, play it at least that's more important than having f 50 shades of gray dwarf yeah. Um, and I think we we spent the time needed to to fix it all up the first three months, but now we actually now that we have done the first update that is Hearth and Home. Uh, it was a nice experience doing it. It it also just feels like it was very boxed in, and we never worked like that before. It felt more like having a box. Well, like you have a, a certain size of a Christmas present box, and you have to put all these all these things into the box and present it. Like, ta-da! Here's your Christmas present. Obviously, when we do it that way, I, it feels like people will have expectations because you when there's a big label on it says Hearth and Home, so you ex expect a lot of things. Right. Um, so it was nice doing that. But it, it just feels more correct for us to sit down and uh, we're working on three different things at the same time right now. That's why uh, you're so one busy. of them. Yes. <laughs> so one of them is basically complete. Basically, we're testing it right now, and uh, and that 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 thing, or the whole the whole that package that we're working on currently is very much like how we worked back in er, before early access so this is this is like going back to 
the roots of Iron Gate, how we how we come up with stuff and how we how we continue. Because the whole <laughs> I can't talk too much about it, but <laughs> Richard had an idea, and we've been talking about this like this small little thing, and it become it became bigger and bigger, and actually we had time to sit down and do this. It's like yes, let's do it, and we did it. And it's um, some people are have been playing it this week, and they like it, so that feels nice. <laughs> But then we have like the, the the next thing that we're working on, and then we have Mistlands. Uh, so there's a few things coming out that feels like it's our pace, it's on our terms, and we want to present it to you because we're proud of it, and not because you, not because you want this, mm -hmm. but because we believe the game needs it. Mm -hmm. um, because we're gonna have like we're still going to be working on Valheim and updating and giving new content to it after release. Oh. I think that's something that people, when we went had the fireside chat, I think people maybe misunderstood or we maybe we weren't that clear about it. You're talking about after 1.0? Yes. Okay. Uh, so there will still be content coming out. Uh, and that's always been the plan. Um, but it's not going to be like... Is it Minecraft to just like one big patch a year or something like that? I don't think it's going to be that far <laughs> apart. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yay. <laughs> that makes my day right there. We can leave now. Bye, everybody. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, no, but we we still want to, and I think that was always the goal from the beginning. I remember Richard, he, he was saying, like, before early access in the beta stage, he was like, it would be nice if we could continue working on our new game project when Valheim is done, and have, like, a B-team, or uh, like, if we need to put in some more content, we can allocate people to putting in working on Valheim at the same time, and adding and fixing, and like just making it, fleshing it out. We don't want to leave... Like, Valheim is, for me, my adopted baby. This is Richard's actual baby. Right. Um, so we're, we're not going to leave Valheim to fend f for herself. Wow. Thanks for that. That is excellent news. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did make it sound like it, we were going to, like, the game is done. Here you go. Bye 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 bye. I gotta say, I I kind of was a little bit worried about that because I think there is an impression of that out in the community of like, like the statement that there will be an end to this game sounded very concrete. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, like very concrete in terms of like just different things. Kind of like thinking, okay, well then it's done and you're out. You know. Yeah, I think the the the, the whole purpose of that statement is more like there's an ending to the game and there's a fine like when you complete the game the game is basically over unless you want to continue building and exploring and but yeah i think it's more like we don't want to be a live service kind of game mm -hmm. uh, we want to push out content when content is due and fix it fix the bugs and fix everything so it's a nice experience uh, but i mean a, a game like valheim is, is something you could we could work on that for 10 years and still not feel it's complete because there's so much we could push put into the game. Like, for example, ropes <laughs> or chains. <laughs> what a good idea. And pulley systems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like this base. It'll never be finished. Ever. Mm. And, I mean, with a, with a sandbox game like this, there's so many endless ideas. Yep. And cool. it, 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 it is difficult. I mean, just today we were talking about um, how the moon and the sun works in Valheim. Mm -hmm. Do we re rotate? Does the, the branch of Valheim rotate around the sun? Or or does the, ro the, does the sun rotate around the branch? We have no idea. Does that have a meaning? <laughs> Can we incorporate that somehow? I don't know. But it, it, it's always something we can add. There's always, there's always going to be something. And the fact is, that you guys love and are invested in this game so much, um, you know, I think makes that, that growth continue to be exciting, I would think. I I think it's... 
<laughs> it's just like coming into your house here. I forgot that we released Hearth and Home. Oh, wow. I forgot that we made the pots and pans and all this. It's and uh, it's nice to see because I haven't been playing for a while. I I noticed like the 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 big bed that you've got. Mm -hmm. I remember doing that like one and a half year ago. Oh, was it like, like two years ago? Mm -hmm. Creating that bed, and it's nice to see that it, people are actually using it, and uh, yeah. it's it's a lovely feeling to know that people actually like something that you create. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, what? It's also equally not as nice to know that people hate <laughs> as well, though. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only. Ma I mean, like you know, like I'm a new YouTuber, right? I'm a very small channel. And first of all, the fact that you would reach out and be willing to support a small content creator, I can't even tell you how much that means to me, seriously. Um, I think that that really speaks a lot um, to you and to your team's care of the community and being invested in it. That's really amazing. And I, I, I just kind of feel like, like I, I saw you and your stuff, and I was like, wait, this is this the? Because you're the only female woman that I've actually seen doing uh, like information about Valheim. Um, I've only seen guys doing it. You, you know, I haven't either. I haven't. I don't know. And and then I don't know. It, it just felt like it, it should be more a better representation around that as well, but. I don't know. I don't know really know what I wanted to get with that. But when we released uh, early access, and within the first week, I noticed that people actually loved the game. It felt I, I went down and talked to people in the voice chat in the Discord, and they were like, "Wow, the developer is talking." It's like, "What? Mm -hmm. oh, he's talking yeah. about me?" <laughs> and I was like, "What? Uh, uh, yeah." Because I'm just a normal guy. If I right. if we were to meet you out on the street, we would be nerds <laughs> walking <laughs> on the street. Like there's no difference between what what who I am and what I do with you, for example. So I just like I want to blur that line. There's there's no big difference. We're not gods. We're not. We're just trying to make a game, and if people support us, I I want to be able to support them as well. Um, that's an amazing attitude, and I appreciate that, you know, that you're grounded. It's got to be so strange having such a big difference in how people kind of relate to you all of a sudden, and that's what I was thinking before, like, being a new YouTuber, um, that was, like, very present in my mind, you know, and starting out, like, when you put yourself out in the public sphere in whatever area especially if it's something online, sometimes people can be very not kind, you know? Yes. Like, detached from realizing this is a human being on the other side of this. Like, you wouldn't walk up to someone in a restaurant and say these things, you know? Mm. And so, but on the other hand, there's such a positive reward when your creativity you know, meets with someone's heart and they care about it and enjoy it and, you know? Mm. No, I absolutely agree. And I think that that should be rewarded as well. And uh, this is, I don't know, I, I, I just don't feel like these situations, like, for example, we're sitting here talking and we had, like, sometimes we had, like, uh, a little bit of a silence between us. Mm -hmm. And I, to, to be honest, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Because it feels natural. Uh, there's so many people who, who who become nervous and 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 don't let the quiet speak for itself. Uh, that I know that I don't know where I want to get with, with this, but I know that so many times when I'm sitting in voice chat because of, because of the uh, the COVID times, and sitting in voice chat with Richard, and we're just working and nobody's talking. Yeah. We're just sitting and working because we enjoyed each other's company. Um, I don't know where I wanted to get with that, to be honest. <laughs> but I, well, I mean, I think it speaks to, like, like you said, like a level of comfort, you know, yeah. around people. Like, if you're comfortable just chatting with someone, then it's fine if you, like, stop for a minute or longer because you're doing something else. It's not a big deal. Um, exactly. 
but yeah, when you kind of get put on a pedestal, then sometimes I guess you could kind of lose some of that nat natural interaction with people. It's it's very weird. I, I have to say <laughs> because last year nobody I can only cared, imagine. and this year people care. I was at the Sweden Game uh, Conference a couple of weeks ago. And me and Lisa were up on stage talking in front of like 200 people or something like that. And afterwards, um, I was standing somewhere and I was standing at the staircase, basically. And I thought I was blocking the staircase so that people couldn't get up the stairs. So I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, you can go up there. I didn't mean to stand in the way. And they were queuing to talk to me. And I was like, wait, <laughs> you guys are here to talk to me. Why? <laughs> Why? What? 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 what what's going on? And uh, they they just wanted to talk and and ha hang out, be in my presence, which was, it, it's humbling. But it's like I'm just a guy. <laughs> I'm just just a normal guy. Yeah. Who's a nerd who who, who loves food. Uh, I mean, it was, it's so surreal to be in the situations where we're like that because I would. And they they formed a queue. They were in the line. That would be strange. Standing. But it's awesome, it, too. I mean, it's yes, awesome that absolutely. you're humble, but I mean, it's awesome that your adopted child, you know, is so loved by so many people. You know, that's got to be very rewarding feeling. Oh, absolutely. There, There's... Uh, I was so afraid that we we weren't going to get anywhere. Um, well, you were wrong, my friend. Oh, we did. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was wrong. You were wrong. I'm, I'm extremely thankful for, for everything that has happened. More fun info to come in our next episode. Until then. Happy gaming. Happy gaming. <laughs>